I've been writing and drawing letters since 2013. It's been a while, and in this video, I'm going to share to you my journey and progress since then, so stay tuned. What is up, folks? My name is Jelvin, and welcome to the first of many episodes that I'll be producing for you folks. Yeah, you heard that right. I've been doing lettering and calligraphy since 2013. But even before that, I've been studying and learning typography since 2010. This is going to be a straightforward video as I'll be sharing to you folks my journey and progress and how I got into the world of type. But don't worry, I'll do my best to make this a worthwhile video for you. So for each segment of the video, I'll break it down into three parts. First is the education. I'm going to be sharing with you folks how I improve day by day and the things that I did and the steps that I took. I'm going to be sharing some sample works that I did during each year. Unfortunately, I don't have the physical works with me, but my past self did a ton of posting on Instagram. So thanks to him, I can share to you folks the things that I've been doing. And I know you folks like it when someone shares their resources. So along the way, I'm going to be sharing some links, books and whatnot. So you have something to bring home with you. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before all the lettering and calligraphy took place, it all started with typography. I told myself upon entering college, I wanted to study graphic design on the side. And one of the topics that really, really piqued my interest was typography. It was during the era when Tumblr had an abundance of inspirational, motivational typography posters like these. You know, those posters where you have a photo, you slap on some text, and then you add in a filter, and then you have a motivational poster. It was a pretty weird way for me to get into typography, but it got me into it anyway. So what really caught my eye were these works. The Keep Calm and Carry On poster the I Love New York campaign, and the Barack Obama Hope poster by Shepard Ferry. The reason why I like these works is because of the typesetting along with the illustration. I didn't even know what typesetting was, so I had to do my research. So I researched on how to create posters like these, and one of the key components when I was learning how is choosing fonts. So lo and behold, I got addicted to looking at typefaces. I was one of those people who had this insatiable fascination with looking at these beautiful letter forms that if I can identify the font being used in a certain design, I'd be very happy. Websites like Fonts and Use really gave me the light. Nerd! Everything led me to doing some posters of my own. I got lucky finding some of my old work and here it is. So these works were inspired by the songs from the Heavy Eyes album by June Marisi. Clearly, I didn't know what I was doing, but I did it anyway. I also designed a series of posters for a friend who was having a birthday party. It was an Alice in Wonderland themed party. So the idea here was to capture the vibe of the movie into posters. Not too shabby, but I think I can do better now. A couple of books that made me love typography even more were these books. So it's Just My Type by Simon Garfield and Thinking with Type by Ellen Lupton. Just My Type is a non-fiction introduction to typography and fonts in general, while Thinking with Type was my reference book back then. Do check the books out if you can buy or borrow a copy. In essence, it's because of typography that paved the way to me appreciating letter forms and styles. I thought of sharing this part of my story because all of the lessons that I've learned back then have been pretty helpful for me even up until now. 2013 came and while I was doing some research, I stumbled upon the works of Sean West or Sean McCabe and I was like, what? I couldn't believe how these were hand drawn. I mean, look at these, it's so clean. As I dug deeper into his works, I later learned what he was doing was hand lettering. I bought a notebook and a couple of pens the next day, and that was when my lettering journey officially started. So here's my first work. 
Again, I didn't know what I was doing back then. I was just drawing letters. So I just transferred what I know in typography on paper. And here are a couple of my other works. So during this time, I wasn't really that invested in lettering because of uni and other activities, but I would do a piece from time to time. 2014 wasn't that different from 2013, but things started to pick up during the second quarter. And here are some of my works again. At that time, I was still doing hand lettering, just drawing letters. And then soon after, I picked up some new tools. These are some of my brush lettering work back then. And then just for kicks, I got myself some nibs for pointed pen calligraphy. Now I've posted over 200 works on Instagram during 2014, so I'll just do my best to pick out the works that I like the most and share them along the way. Again, here are some of my hand lettering work. I got myself some new brush pens, that's why during that time, I got really hooked to brush lettering. I even framed my own work. So the pointed pen journey continues. along with some broad edge pen calligraphy. I even tried to mock the work that I did on some photos just for fun. And while I was exploring on more tools, I managed to make my own tools. Things got really experimental. I mean, I even used a toothbrush just to test things out. I'm a weird person. Oh, this was the time when Instagram launched their video feature, so I posted a couple of videos, and here are some of them. Most of the videos that I was recording were just me writing some random words. I still had a ton of videos, but you folks can check it out on Instagram. I didn't get to read any books during that time, so sorry, but what I had was a pool of inspiration. My works are by no means original but it's because of these people that made me who I am today. Just to mention a couple of people that inspired me, they are TS1, Luca Barcelona, John Stevens, Ivan Castro, Jackson Alves, Paul Antonio, Seb Lester, and Matt Fricottis. They were probably the first few people who had a ton of content about lettering and calligraphy during that time, so it's all thanks to them. I also met people in the area who I'm honored to call my friends. Just to mention some of them, Gail, Fozzy, June, John Ed, Carl, and Patrick. Yeah, they are all my heroes and they still are. What did I do specifically to improve myself even when I didn't have any books? I was learning and developing my techniques. One thing I realized early on was to study technique first over style. In my perspective, Deconstructing a technique will give you an idea on how to create the letter forms compared to just copying it. I'll do a more in-depth video about this in the future, so stay tuned for that. Again, if it wasn't for these videos, I wouldn't be able to do the techniques that I'm doing today. And I think I would have given up. In general, 2013 or 2014 were my formative years in developing and learning more skills and techniques. 2015 and 2016 were the years where I'm at the height of my journey. Again, it was more or less the same. One tiny bit of change that I did was to incorporate what I know in photography. As you can see, during this time, I was still using my smartphone, posting my work. Still using my smartphone. This was pretty much the transition. Using a better camera to take photos really livens up your work and I felt that I improved just because the photo was better. <laughs> 
and I still kept going. One of the reasons why I gained a following during that time was because I was sharing work every day. And not only just sharing work, I was writing reviews, talking about techniques, sharing what I know to everybody. And during this time, I was already sharing what I know in workshops. That's why I always had to go back to the basics. 40% of my posts back then were full of drills, drills, and just drills. I was really determined to improve on what I was doing so that if I share the things that I know, it's gonna be beginner friendly. Yeah, one time I was doing drills, I remember starting from 12 midnight up until 6 or 7 a.m. By the time that I finished, the sun was already shining. Again, I am a very weird guy. Hey, just a couple of my works again. Okay, more books. Two books that I highly suggest letterers and calligraphers get are these two books. The ABC of Custom Lettering by Ivan Castro and Brush Lettering by Marilyn Reeves and Elijah Schultz. I hope I pronounced that right. The reason why I love these two books specifically is because it comes from a design and application perspective while keeping things beginner friendly. I think all of my lettering and calligraphy friends would agree with me on this. So overall, 2015 or 2016 was all about me improving my consistency, relearning the basics, and sharing everything I know to everyone. 2017 to 2018, I didn't really get to do a ton of work because I was busy with my day job and my freelance work, but I did manage to squeeze in a couple. Yeah, just some random works that I did during that time. Again, some of my works during 2017. This set of work was inspired by Jeepney Science back then. You would see these sign painted phrases inside Jeeps everywhere. It was kind of like a social commentary for me. So Carly Rae Jepsen released Party For One during that time, so this is a tribute piece to that. I made some prints as well as a giveaway for one of the talks I was invited to. Really love the texture. Probably my favorite set of work during 2017 and 2018 was this. I'm not really a full-fledged hip-hop fan, but it really inspired me to do a couple of pieces based on Future, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake. Even though I wasn't doing that much work that time, I was busy formalizing my education in typography. I've listed down a ton of books in the description below. Fast forward 2019, I picked up the pen again. I had the privilege to get myself an iPad Pro and it really sped up my drafting process. It also gave me a little bit of motivation back. There's nothing much to say about 2019, but here are some of my favorite works so far. The app that I'm using here is Procreate. I'm still a noob with Procreate, so whatever I'm doing here is just applying what I know how to do on paper. I'm not sure if it's evident, but 80% of my process is all about drafting. Whenever I do a piece, I almost always consider these things. Letter form, layout, legibility, readability, baselines, inclinations, just to name a few. I tend to work on the letter forms most and spend hours and hours trying to get the curves and angles right. I'll be doing a video about my design and lettering process soon, so stay tuned for that as well. Uh, this is pretty much it for my body of work, but I'm excited to do more pieces soon. All of the things that you see in this video is the result of constant practice and persistence. I can't say that I've reached my 10,000 hours, but I'd like to believe I'm halfway there. So I just want to part some lessons that I've learned along the way, and I hope that this will be useful for you. Now, lesson one is setting a goal. Imagine a desired future state. Imagine a state where you are already good, and you have to reverse engineer that. What are the steps that I need to take for me to get to the state that I desire? Do I want to be as good as Seb Lester? 
if you want to be as good as Seb Lester, you have to deconstruct everything that he's doing such that you can cross out each item one by one every day. I'll leave a video about goal setting in the description below, so do check it out. Lesson two, document everything. The reason why I'm able to do this video is because I was posting incessantly back then. So yeah, your future self will thank you for that. Lesson three, your first work is gonna suck. So just share it anyway. No excuses, no excuses. Lesson four, learn the basics first. I mentioned that I learned typography before I did lettering and calligraphy, right? So it helped me build my foundation. Sometimes it could get really boring, but I highly suggest getting down to the core of each topic. Lesson five is practice, 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 practice deliberately. So every time that you're practicing, imagine that each piece is going to be the final work and that's how you practice deliberately. So I hope the video wasn't that long for you, but thanks nonetheless for staying put. It was really fun producing this, but I do appreciate it if you folks can give some feedback. As an incentive, I've compiled everything that I mentioned in a list, so check it out in the description below. So if you want to talk about something that I mentioned in this video, leave the timestamp message in the comment section below. Do hit the like button if you find this video helpful. Subscribe for more lettering related content and maybe share it to your friends. Last but not the least, I hope this video gave you the motivation to start or continue whatever lettering related project you're doing. So yeah, see you on the next video. Ciao. I'll break it down. <clears throat> it was kind of...